What's up, you med school maniacs? <laughs> What's up, you med school maniacs? My name is Sean. I'm a third year medical student going on to my fourth year, and we have an important topic to discuss today. First of all, big disclaimer I'm not talking about any medical school when we're discussing these topics here. I'm just talking about you as a medical student deciding on the pros and cons of going to medical school while it's online in these virtual lectures, virtual schooling. Another thing, this is all with the predictions and hopes that you will return to your medical school in January 20. 2021, your second term. So we're going to be talking about the pros and cons of attending medical school virtually. First pro, I already forgot, so I'm going to be looking here. First pro, you got to stay at home. Don't have to pay for rent. Don't have to move anywhere. Don't have to take flights anywhere. You can study from the comfort of your own home in your pajamas. Going through medical school in your pajamas? Yeah, sign me up, right? Totes. Probably the best thing your mom could cook for you. You could always be like, mom, I'm so stressed out. Can I have a croissant? Another pro, medical school is hard. Imagine everything you know about studying, getting dissected, gutted, flipped upside down, and you're rebuilding your whole framework, your whole foundation from bottom to top. And that's what medical school is, especially in your first term. You're gonna be making a lot of changes and it can be frustrating at times. You're going to be filled with so many feelings, inadequacy, self-doubt. What else did I feel in my first term? Anxiety fear of failing, depression from failing, <laughs> all those things. You're gonna be going through a lot of these woes. I think that's what the young people say. Going through your woes with your six. So yeah, you'll be with your family. That's cool. It's gonna be an emotional roller coaster. And it would be nice to be in the comfort of your own home and have your own family to look to to help comfort you and make you feel a little bit more safe in these scary times. A lot of people can feel a little isolated at times. So that's a good thing. That's a good thing, yeah. Good thing, yeah, good thing, good thing. So that's a good thing. You could find your study group. You would be by yourself. You would be given these lectures on your own. You'd be given these assignments and you'd have to tackle through all of them on your own. You could find what works for you best. In my first term, I would see other people doing things and studying a certain way, whether it's whiteboarding, using flashcards, studying from different study guides or study material. Every single time I felt victim to it, I'd be like, oh, what is he studying? I'm not doing that. I'm gonna fail this test. He's rewriting everything in the lecture. Oh, I didn't rewrite anything. I haven't done any memory drills. It's this thing that happens automatically where you compare yourself to others. You might not be as susceptible to that. If you're at home, you don't really have that much exposure. So you won't have this fear of missing out on other study, other study materials. Fear of missing out on other study sources. FAMOOS. You won't have FAMOOS. Next one. Things are not just changing for you, it's changing for the school too. These are unprecedented times, as we all know. We are not perfect as students. Schools are not perfect as institutions. They will make mistakes. As much as we are getting used to how they're delivering their study materials and classes and small groups and labs, they're adapting just as much, if not even more so. So there are gonna be mistakes and they might realize, oh, we're noticing that compared to last term that was in person, the averages of our test exams are a little bit lower. So let's bump up that curve a little bit. Let's just raise that up. Yeah, I'm not saying that that would definitely happen, but that's a possibility. What I'm trying to say is that you're the guinea pigs and <laughs> there's gonna be inherently some wiggle room. Things are expected to go wrong, but it's just how quickly your school can adapt and correct those things. So anyways, there might be some wiggle room. Another positive, you don't have to shower. I didn't shower today. I always start the day off with honesty. That's, that's the rule in my book. Yeah, you don't have to shower, you don't have to get ready, you don't have to drive to anywhere, you don't have to change into scrubs and go into the lab and do this and that. You could literally just do all the studying from the comfort of your own home. And that is priceless in my opinion. But it's a good thing, you know, you do save a lot of time and energy. Yes, there were good things about going to class with humans, right? Like in person, I mean. There are good things about that. You get to make friends and get to learn who you are as a person in a sea of other people that are doing the same exact thing as you. But especially after maybe the first or second exam, I think from then on in lecture, I would be like, please let me go home so I could study. Even if it was the greatest lecturer in the world, we all kind of study and learn our own ways. And some people really loved going to lecture and were able to focus 100%. But I found that when I was in lecture, I would be listening to the professor and it would just be like watching a static screen on television. I'd be trying to take it in, I'd be trying to take notes, I was following along, doing everything I could, but none of it would hit. And I guess that's the process inherently. That's 
that is the process of learning something that's you know more complex or learning something at such a high speed is that you have to go through it multiple times before you even start to understand or start to decipher what it's saying or the message behind it or understanding what is the thing you actually need to memorize. I would learn it so much better and so much faster as soon as I got home watching the same exact lecture, just being able to watch it at home, watch it at a certain speed, like 1.5, and being able to rewind, rewind. Every time I just found myself drifting or daydreaming, I'd always be like, oh, stop, go back, go back, pay attention, pay attention. One thing I do hope is that whatever university you end up going to, they optimize their labs, their small groups to make it as efficient as possible and not make it much as a, hey, you're required to spend this, these many hours, so we're gonna make sure you spend these many hours and the quality you know, might fall, take a hit. Yeah. Now let's talk about the cons. First off, right off the bat, you're not surrounded by other students. When I started, I was surrounded by hundreds of students that were doing the same thing, studying the same lectures as me, thinking the same exact thoughts that I had. Just don't, don't fail, don't fail, don't fail. <laughs> surrounded by students and I think that really helped me focus. It really put me in the mindset of like a survival mode. Yeah. Thank you, mom. <laughs> My mom cuts the romaine lettuce and she gives me the stock because she says she always makes up something like it's good for my eyes or heart or something. That's my mom, everybody loves my mom. I was already taking it as seriously as possible out of fear. It helped even more so just to be surrounded by these students. It made it feel extremely real. Now, another thing that comes along with being surrounded by students, making a best friend. I'll give you a little slice of my personal experience and I'll keep it as short as possible. Hey guys, Sean from editing here. For the next five minutes of this video, I went into this super long story about how I was jumping from friend to friend, study group to study group, and I could never find the people that were perfect for me. And I felt really low about it. I felt like I was never gonna get it and I was never gonna be able to catch up. I always felt overwhelmed and behind. Just by chance, after having a huge failure of a study session with a, another friend, I was walking out of the study hall with my head held down, was waved over by two sweet girls, and and they basically offered for me to join them. And I barely knew them and I, I don't even think I remembered their name at that point. But that day I asked them if I could join their group and make it an official thing because I felt so much better about myself just being able to sit with them and laugh, just enjoy my time a little bit more, kind of take a step back and realize life is not all about studying and whatever, you know, just not, just not be so in it 100% of the time. Ask them if I could join their group. They said yes. I stuck with them from that day on to the day even. 100% I wouldn't be here right now if it wasn't for them. They were able to fill and address qualities about myself that I did not have that much discipline in. And the whole point of the story is that I would have never found these people who quickly became my best friends and helped me get through medical school if I was not there going through term one in person. Don't think I would have ever met those people People, and my life would probably be a lot different right now. Long story and summed it up for you. All right, back to the video. <laughs> look at this, look at this, looks like I'm constipated. And I'm not trying to deter you 100%. Probably the best thing for you is if you keep trying on your own instead of trying to, you know, rely on external factors. It's just gonna require you to, to reflect on yourself almost on a daily basis or weekly basis or even test by test basis. See what worked, see what didn't. Things that worked, start tweaking on it, start fleshing on it. Things that didn't, just toss it and forget it and just be more honest with yourself and be able to adapt and be flexible with yourself and the way you study. I would also rely on the community, right? So face Facebook groups with the students in your term. And the good thing about medical school is that all the upper termer students, for the most part, they really want to help the students before them because they know how tough it is. What was I even talking about? Also online resources, Boards and Beyond. What is that guy's name? Dr. Oh, the Indian guy who got really buff and bald. Man, whatever. He's so cool though. That guy's swaggy. What is his name? Dr. YouTube. I don't even know. Medical school. Dr. Um, Indian. Sorry, Indian doctor. No, that doesn't help. Oh yes, it helped. Dr. Najib! Another thing is you might miss out on resources. Like I said before, just walking through a study hall, you could see how 30 different students study all at one time and see what resources they're using. And it's such an easy transaction. It's so seamless where you could be like, hey, what is that that you're looking at? Oh, it's this. I really like this thing. I think it helps me with this. Would you like it? Yeah, go ahead, airdrop it to me. It's that easy. If anybody actually talks like that, just maybe stay away from them. 
but yeah. So study groups, that is a very valuable resource because you are discussing topics, you are teaching each other topics, you say, hey, I suck at this thing, hey, I suck at this thing, let's work on them and then we'll teach them to each other. And then boom, exchange of information and topics. A very powerful resource, but again, that could be tough when you're at home studying online. Also, it could really help you push those study sessions into those long hours, morning to night type of thing. If you're by yourself, you might find it a little bit easier to just say, call it quits for the day. When you're with somebody else or with a group of other people, you're kind of held accountable and you will always try to work a little bit harder when you're surrounded by others. Have, okay, why is my nose so Another thing you have to consider is, do you have any other option? Are you gonna wait till next year to apply and to go to medical school? You gotta remember medical school is a very long process. It's a marathon. One term is going to go by in a flash. Things might be difficult. You might be in territories that nobody has treaded before. Do you want to prolong it by another semester, another year? That's something you have to consider. If you're about to start your first term in August, I made a video previously about five tips to get past term one. I'll link it right here. If it's this side. No, this side. If you want to. Link it. You don't have to find it right there. I think this covered most of the basis. If I think of anything else, I'll post it. I'll be posting another video right after this about online resources that saved my life in term one. If you are interested in that, you know where to find it right there. Right. All right. If you like this video, go ahead, give it a like. And if you love it, go ahead, prescribe to my channel. That's right. I'm calling prescribe. Go ahead, prescribe to my channel. Don't subscribe, prescribe to my channel. Is that lame? Yeah, it's probably corny. Corny. All right, thanks so much, guys. Bye. I'd also like to read, but on the other hand, I would also like to re re reiterate, reiterate, but on the other hand, <sighs> okay. Every time I shoot a video, my mouth just gets really wet. I have no idea why. But a thing I'd like to re, re but a thing I'd like to reiterate, 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 reiterate. Why don't I just change the word?